Hey guys, Jessica here, the Furry Family Coach. In this video, we are t discussing the difference in fresh and processed food for our pets. So let's just get right into this because I have done so many videos on my channel about fresh foods, about processed foods, about why you shouldn't feed kibble to your pets, and the list just goes on and on and on. Um, and so I wanted to just do a really quick overview of fresh versus processed foods and why you want to choose one over the other. So real, real quick before we get started, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. And if you look right down there and that subscribe button is red, go ahead and click it and turn it gray. Subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. And it helps YouTube know what kind of content you like to see. So one of the big questions that I see all of the time about pets is what should I feed my pet? And overwhelmingly my answer and the answer of many, many um, holistic and integrative veterinarians and other pet parents and just a lot of people out there is a balanced fresh food diet. Now, the reason that a lot of veterinarians say don't feed raw or don't feed fresh food is because people aren't balancing it properly and therefore our pets are paying the price for not eating a balanced diet which is why a balanced fresh food diet is always going to be the best thing that you can feed your pet. So raw bones and raw meats and raw vegetables, if you choose to include vegetables, which if you're balancing, you should probably include some vegetables in there. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, balancing is something that some people choose to do every meal, something that some people choose to do over time, like within the course of a week. And I've seen it work both ways. As long as you are balancing the nutrition that they need with a cat, I prefer 100% to balance every meal. Um, but that's, again, that's my opinion. Um, but hands down, bar none, a balanced fresh food diet is always going to be better to feed your pet than a processed diet, which includes every type of kibble, kibble out there, including those supercharged, super nutrient, blah, blah, blah. We're the best kibble out there. We're, you know, twice as expensive as everything else out there, kibbles. And the reason is that, is that because when you process the food that goes into making the kibble, you are removing all of the life, all of the vitality out of that food. You are removing all of the nutrition, which is why they add back in nutrients. They add in synthetic vitamins and minerals, which by the way, is not uh, bioavailable in the same way that a fresh food is. If you take a vitamin versus eating an apple or, you know, whatever, equivalent to whatever vitamin you're taking, eating an orange, your body is going to be able to break down and use the nutrients in that orange far better than in that pill. Kibbles are essentially fast food. So if you know that you know you can't live your entire life on fast food and expect yourself to be healthy, why would you expect your pet to live their entire life on fast food and be healthy? You can't, you shouldn't. It's, it's, not even possible. And of course, regardless of whatever the label says, you have no real way of knowing what exactly went into that bag or that can. You don't know where the the foods came from that they used to make that. You don't know the processing that it went through. You don't know where the synthetic vitamins and minerals came from. Um, in fact, and, in, and you don't even know all of the testing that went into. In fact, um, it was 2019, I believe, we had a huge, huge um, issue with synthetic vitamins and minerals coming from China that were being used in our pet food because the pet food companies were not testing the synthetic, they call them premixes. They weren't testing the premixes prior to using them in the foods um, and they weren't testing their food after the premix was used and there were insanely high levels of certain, um, I, I believe it was vitamin D, but there were other things going on as well. That, that was just one instance uh, that was, were causing a lot of animals to get sick, some even died. And so we don't know exactly what is in this can or what is in this bag. So here's the ranking of foods. Best to worst of what you can feed your pet. The very best food that you can feed your pet is a fresh, balanced, local, raw diet. The next best food that you can feed your pet is going to be a frozen raw diet. And of course, again, balanced. Now, I don't have the time currently to create my own foods for my dog. 
Um, so I choose the frozen diet. Now I know when I'm feeding that frozen diet that uh, vitamin E is depleted over time when frozen. So I have to add additional vitamin E to my dog's diet. Um, but that's something that I know that I go into knowing. So the second best is a balanced frozen raw diet. The third best food that you can feed your pet is a local, fresh, balanced, cooked food diet. Again, you know, that takes time, it takes energy. If you don't have that, then the fourth best that you can feed your pet is a freeze-dried, dehydrated, or air-dried, balanced diet. And then the final, the fifth and final best uh, food that you can feed your pet is going to be processed commercial foods, um, which again, are balanced so they're better than an unbalanced meal however um, they are definitely not designed for your pet to thrive they are designed for your pet to survive so there's a big difference in thriving and surviving and what do you want your pet to do thrive or survive it's also really important to know that every pet every dog every cat is an individual and as individuals there's not necessarily one right way to do something um, you know my dog is different from your dog is different from your neighbor's dog is different from your mom's dog is different. you know they're all individuals and you know this blanket oh this kibble this one bag of kibble is good for your pet from birth to death and every other dog out there in the world too just doesn't make sense but also when you are feeding um, a fresh food balanced diet what you feed your pet may not be the best thing to feed your neighbor's pet um, I know if you follow dr. Judy Morgan at all she is very heavy into traditional Chinese medicine and using foods to combat disease and she actually has a book out there, which I will link in the description below, that covers, you know, feeding for coat color, feeding for if your dog is, you know, cold or hot nature, you know, that, which, again, the book describes how to tell if your dog is on the, on the spectrum of cold or hot or neutral. Um, and, and foods to feed all of these different life forces, um, which, you know, my, my dog... She loves beef, let me tell you, but she is a yellow-coated dog, so um, chicken is actually better for her. So, you know, there's there's so many things to consider when feeding your pet. Just understand that every animal, just like every human, is an individual. So don't put them in the box of a one-size-fits-all um, kind of mentality that, you know, society has imposed upon us. It just doesn't work for us, and it doesn't work for our pets. So I do hope this video helped to just kind of break through, you know, that preconceived notion that kibble is the best thing we can feed our pets, um, because it isn't. <laughs> it is a preconceived notion. It is uh, something that we only know to be true based on marketing. It is the fad. In fact, um, it's only started since World War II that we have even fed kibble to our pets. So really, kibble is the, the fad. It's not... Um, you know, feeding a fresh food diet is not the fad. That's the norm. So let's get with that. Let's let's get that going in our in our brains and understand starting starting from that mindset. What's the best thing we can actually be feeding our pet to help them thrive rather than just survive? And if you are interested in learning more about this topic, definitely check out playlist on my channel where I talk way more in depth about feeding kibble versus feeding process, I mean feeding processed food versus feeding fresh foods. And even I, I even have on my channel an entire playlist um, when, when my husband and I decided to transition fully to a raw food diet for our dogs day by day the, th the different things we were learning as we went through that transition period um, and I shared all of that with you so it's a pretty interesting I think playlist to go through because it's like every day there's like this different oh moment of like oh man yeah that makes sense I learned something new today here's the new thing I learned today so um, it, it's pretty interesting in that regard I hope you go through it and if you have any questions at all please comment down below and let me know I would appreciate all of that from you don't forget to check the description box there's so much stuff in the description there's so many links um, 
If you can get my ebook, I am a positive reinforcement dog trainer. You can get, uh, you can join the group, which I would love for you to do. Go ahead and join the family. That link is also in the description. You can, oh, check out the beginner dog training series. It's a playlist right here on YouTube that's also linked down below. And my Amazon storefront, which I curated items for your pets, just for you. Handpicked every single one of them. So I do take, hope you take the time to check that out. That link is in the description. Again, give this video a big thumbs up. It is the best compliment you can give. And look right down there at that subscribe button. If it is red, go ahead and click it and turn it gray. When that happens, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for being here with me in this video. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.